What's going on guys? Today we're going to be unboxing the Spectre Arms SAH02. I hope you're all doing well and today we've got an unboxing and review slash first impressions for the Spectre Arms SAH02. So, nice classic Spectre Arms box. You've got the range of uh, Spectre Arms M4 models on the back. So if we open her up, now this is actually going to be my first look at this gun. I haven't opened it since I've got it uh, delivered. I've heard some good things about this thing, so I've got some quite high expectations. So, we've got an instruction manual, a set of Spectnarm stickers, uh, the Spectnarm's catalogue, this seems to be a bit outdated for 2018, because uh, I believe the, the SAH02 actually came out around 2017, 2018, but it would help if we turn this around the right way. There she is. So we'll, we'll go over what we've got in the box uh, to start with. So we've got um, a wind up key for the high cap mag. We'll go through this in a bit more detail later. You've got the steel plated high cap mag. I believe this, is, uh, this carries approximately 300 rounds. It's got some nice 556 by 45 rounds uh, printing on the front. Really nice metal, quite sturdy. Now, I don't believe this actually comes with a an, an jamming rod. Oh, yes, it does. We've got the unjamming rod here, which is standard for um, any S gun that you get, really. And we've also got a lanyard, which is meant to sneak around the back of the gun, so you can put whatever you want on here. Last but not least, we've got the actual AG itself. So, as for first impressions goes, it's got a really, really nice weight behind it. Uh, the weight is really nice and evenly distributed. It's not top heavy or bottom heavy. It's just nice and even. It's, in general, it's just nice and solid. There's no creaks or anything. Um, it's a really good looking gun. It has a rich black finish on the metal work. I mean, the finishing on it in general is just really, really clean. Yeah, I think it's, it's, I think it's a really good looking gun. I'm a big fan of it already. And just a quick one, guys, before we continue to have a look at the rest of the AEG. If you are enjoying the video so far, please be sure to drop a like as it really does help the channel. The flash hider at the front is actually removable. It's 14 millimeters uh, counterclockwise, so if it's not to your liking, you can take it off and put a suppressor, trace unit, whatever you want on there. There are also two sling points at the front and both sling points and the flash hider are actually made of metal. We've got a 9.5 inch RIS slash RAS rail handguard. Um, it's, it's monolithic and it runs 15 inches across the top. So you've got a decent amount of um, rail space. But what I do have to mention is that the railing is actually quite uncomfortable um now this is with uh when i'm manipulating and um, handling the gun with my bare hands but once you put some gloves on these are just uh some black mechanics gloves it's absolutely fine there's no discomfort no irritation whatsoever uh and the majority of airsoft players usually do wear gloves anyway so this shouldn't be a problem and along the 15 inch railing at the top, you've got the drum style iron sights. These are typically what you find on the standard HK416 uh, rifles. Uh, these iron sights are also made of metal. So you've got no, you should have no worries with regards to durability with them. And they're also removable. So if you find that they are getting in the way of your red dot sight or scope, or they're just simply not to your liking, you can take them off and replace them with whatever you like. 
And at the back of the rail, we've got the metal charging handle. Uh, obviously this will manipulate the fully functioning bolt catch release. And if we pull the stop back, you'll see that the buffer tube is also made out of metal. So there's a lot of metal construction in this uh, rifle. And the stock itself has uh, five different extensions, so you can manipulate that depending on how far you want it. The stock itself has two different sling points and a third in the middle. Uh, it's made out of polymer uh, with a rubberized butt pad, so you won't be slipping anywhere when you've got it against your shoulder. Now moving towards the body of the rifle, uh, in the lower receiver you've got the fire selector. Let's just test see how snappy the fire selector is. It's actually got a really nice click, um, really secure. Yeah, really happy with that. And like I said earlier, it's got a fully operational uh, bolt catch release, which is a really nice touch. With the uh, polymer pistol grip, which has got a slight stippling on the sides and the rear. And it fits, fits good, it fits good on the hand. Also, the Spectner Arms trademark. Now, when I saw this in the pictures, I wasn't actually a massive fan, but looking at it now, I think it actually quite completes the gun. Actually, it's grown on me. And the 556 markings on the mag, I think goes really nicely with it. Taking the gun out of the box and uh, holding it around a little bit, uh, I've noticed a, little, uh, a couple of different things. Now, I'm going to be taking pride in this channel of making sure that all my reviews and unboxings are unbiased and honest. Um, so, one of the things I've noticed, although it is it's really, really sturdy feeling gun, there is a very slight wobble on the magwell. Um, slight wobble on the stock. Very minuscule wobble uh, at the trigger guard. don't know if you can hear that. But also... There is a um, slight scratch on the metal work. Now, whether this be a uh, manufacturer's fault, I'm not entirely sure, but I don't think it will be damaged through the um, packaging because uh, Spectrum Arms usually have a really good uh, packaging um, process. It's usually really quite compact. But other than the little bits that I've just um, showed, it's a uh, pretty solid gun. So the majority of high cap mags has a winding wheel at the bottom and that's what you'd use to wind up the BBs all the way to the top, but not this one. Uh, the, the high cap mag that the gun comes with actually has a winding key and you'll see that there's a hole at the bottom uh, side of the mag and that's where you actually put the key in and wind it. Now there's going to be a slight clicking noise when the magazine is fully winded so you'll know when the mag is good to go. Now you can kind of view this in two ways. You could appreciate the aesthetics of the mag and the fact that it's a bit more unique than the standard high cap magazine but in a way it is a little bit more inconvenient in the sense that uh, as opposed to having to wind up your high cap mag during the games and all the rattling that usually comes with, you've now got to carry the key with you as well. And it's not just a matter of winding the mag at the bottom anymore, it's a matter of taking up the key from wherever you're storing it, putting it in the mag, and then winding it. So now I can appreciate this is probably this is probably a little bit unattractive to the majority of people considering high cap mags aren't exactly massively popular anyway. But it is a shame because it is a really good looking mag. Now, after doing a bit of research online, um, I've been seeing a lot of people struggling with the magazine compatibility with the HO2. Um, it was listed on the website that they should be compatible with um, a number of different stain mag style M4 mags. So I bought one. This is the New Pro stain mag M4 style mid cap. Uh, I got this from Patrol Base. See, this is also still placed with polymer internals. Now, if you look at the two mags closely, you'll see that they look almost identical. Even the grooving for the mag catch is basically in the same spot. So you'd think that this mag would fit in the HA02, but it doesn't. If we try to fit the magazine into the mag well, you'll see 
that it's just too stiff it doesn't it's too big um it's the magazine itself is just too big for the magwell now after taking a look in a bit more detail what i've come to notice is that the um problem is at the side of the magazine so you see how the ridge uh, that sticks out isn't actually flush with the polymer top and I think that is part of the uh, well the main part of the problem as to why the magazine doesn't fit because uh, in terms of dimensions it's quite identical so if you've just bought the Spectre Arms SAH02 and you're looking for additional magazines Please, please, please do not get the new Pro Stainag M4 Star Max Patrol Base because it's just not going to fit. Now, if you want to see a separate video on the mag compatibility for this gun, uh, we'll be identifying which mags work best and which, which mags uh, don't fit at all. Save you a bit of money. Please let me know in the comment section below and we'll make that happen. Overall, I think the SAH02 is definitely worth its money. This retails for around £200, and for a metal constructed AEG, you can't really go wrong. Of course, it has imperfections, as I outlined earlier, like all airsoft guns do. But would I recommend this gun? Uh, yeah, yeah, I would. I think it's great, particularly for starters, and would also make a great project gun for the airsoft techs out there. That just about wraps up the Spectre Arms SAH02 unboxing and review. If you've also got this AEG, please do drop a comment below on your thoughts on it so far, or even if you don't, share your opinions in the comment section below. If you were looking to buy this gun, I hope this honest and unbiased review has helped you make up your mind as to what you want to do. As this is my first YouTube video, the channel is a fresh blank canvas, so please do comment down below what other SF content you want to see, whether it be more unboxings, reviews, or even gameplay down the line. I'm even thinking about doing a gun setup slash spotlight video after I've made some modifications and added some attachments to the HO2. So if that's something that you want to see, please let me know in the comment section below. If you guys did enjoy this unboxing and review and want to see more, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe just so you don't miss any future videos. Thank you guys for watching Jag Airsoft. It's been a pleasure and I'll see you next time.